Hi, I'm Anisante. Plants are a group of eukaryotic organisms that are mostly classified by their ability to photosynthesize. They're usually stuck where they are, but some plants in our world have an ability to move themselves, almost like they have muscles or a nervous system. They don't, but what if they did? My first speculative evolution video was focused on one species of animal-like plants on a planet called Origin, but let's get into how they evolved and how one species eventually gained sapience. It all started 200 million years ago with a relationship between two plants. The one on the left is a plant-eating plant and has incisor-like teeth to cut stems. They bend at nearby plants to eat their berries. The other, the watchtower plant, has a ring of whisker-like protrusions around the top that sense movement. When the watchtower plant senses a herbivore coming in to eat it, the watchtower plant pulls the stem out of danger. Both these plants continue to evolve side by side in favor of more and more movement, and had dark colors to absorb as much energy as possible from the sun. Nowadays, there are two lineages of animal-like plants, one of heterotrophs and the other of autotrophs. These words just mean that one gets its energy mostly by eating other organisms, while the other makes its own food from photosynthesis. In this video, we'll focus on the autotrophs, but you can check out my first spec Eva video called The Jungle Lights and How to Draw Them for a peek into the heterotrophic side of things. It took 100 million years, but the watchtower plant eventually evolved an elaborate light sensor and nervous system that resembled an eye. It was on one node of the plant atop a stalk, and it went around this node like a ring for a full 360 degrees of vision. Its brain was closer to the ground, so if this watchtower organ was cut off or damaged, the plant could simply grow another one. Here's the final art. The actor plant lived 100 million years ago, and was named for the way it mimicked other flowers. It used its watchtower organ to see what other plants looked like, and then morphed itself to look like them. It often looked like many plants at the same time, which is theoretically the way to tell them apart if they still existed. Also, the watchtower organ seems like it was incapable of changing. Scientists still aren't quite sure why it mimicked all these plants, but some say it was for the fun of startling animals who didn't expect plants to walk around. As fun as that would be, it's complete speculation and quite unlikely considering the intelligence level of organisms at the time. It takes quite a lot of energy to power a moving body and nervous system, and clearly photosynthesis alone wasn't cutting it. The heterotrophs had evolved stomachs to eat other organisms, but the autotrophs had been relying on photosynthesis. The first way to deal with this was parasitism, and to this day is the most common. These animals also evolved fat cells to store energy for later. Here's the final art. The hatter plant lived 50 million years ago and what was named for the way it reproduced. After it bloomed and pollinated, it would shoot seeds out of its flower that would float slowly down. These plants lived their first stages of life as a parasite, so the hatter plant would aim for the seeds to land on animals like a little hat. The seed would take root into the animal and feed on its blood until the plant was large enough to grow on its own. These plants rarely killed their hosts, and the roots would simply be absorbed by the animal once they detached from the growing hatter. It seems like they were very common, as multiple fossils of different animals have been found with the hatter seed and root systems inside them. When an organism requires such a complicated route of survival, it often gains a lot of intelligence to boost its chances of success. If you've watched my other Spec Evo videos, you know I like to sprinkle in a little bit of magic for my sapient organisms, and I like to think that plants would be especially good at this aspect of life. Sorry if you're not super into magic, but I think it's a fun thing to add to worlds and cultures, even if it's a little silly. These plants use magic to create sounds, though they have an organ to project it. Here's the final art. The chatter plant lived 20 million years ago, though it has very similar descendants that are still alive today. The main difference is that the ones alive today are almost twice as heavy, and are known locally as the boombox plant. Anyway, chatter plants had a flower for reproduction, a big foot to carry its weight, a watchtower organ for vision, and leaves that did more than just photosynthesis. These leaves were structured in such a way that sounds coming from the center of its body would be amplified and projected out into the world. It mimicked the sounds of large animals to draw them near and then blast a spray of sticky seeds in their direction. These seeds would develop much like the hatter plant, but when more than a dozen seeds hit even a large animal, it rarely survives. Instead, these seeds take every nutrient they can from the carcass and only leaves to be on their own once there's nothing left but dry bone. All this sounds quite harsh, and it is. However, an unexpected force made a large group of these plants evolve into something much less threatening. This is where it gets kinda silly, but I hope you can still enjoy it. 
These plants developed religion. They began to prioritize wisdom and philosophy over their primitive ways and are now one of the most intelligent organisms on the planet. They still take a similar form but have evolved a completely different lifestyle. Here's the final art. The Theocrat plant, or simply Theocrat, is currently the only known sapient species of plant on origin. They live on high hills in the southern continent, as close as they can get to the sun without freezing to death in the north. They are not parasites, but collect fruit and berries to smash out and plant all their seeds to grow in the sugary concoction. They don't kill plants, and instead do their best to take good care of them so they produce the best fruit they can. They worship the sun and have one leader called the Raid Lord that supposedly takes orders from the sun itself. They don't really have any rules in place to stop the Raid Lord from abusing their power, but it seems like nothing's gone horribly wrong yet. The Raid Lordship isn't a genetic lineage, but supposedly a reincarnation kind of thing where when one dies, a child is born who will replace them. For the approximately 12 years in between, the advisors of the previous Raid Lord will guide the Theocrats. Not much changes in these 12 years. The orange stripes on the leaves of the Raid Lord are painted on, but supposedly there was once a Theocrat that had these stripes naturally. They say that the next one who is born with these stripes will lead the Theocrats to ascend and become sons themselves. Aside from wisdom and philosophy, Theocrat culture is very music oriented, and nearly every big milestone involves singing rather than age. A child is one who cannot sing, but by the age of 7 they can mimic other songs, by 12 they can make their own songs, and by 30 they should be an adult that has full mastery of pitch, tone, tempo, and anything else that makes a song. Again, they do not define an adolescent by age, but by whether they can sing original songs. They don't define an adult by age, but by mastery of music. Theocrat music schools are the best in the world and are attended by anyone with an interest in music. They don't have any specific style, but enjoy anything with intricate melodies and rhythms. For a long time, theocrats were dismissed by other sapien species as a strange sight to be kept in a zoo, but in the last 200 years they have been respected and have their own place in the Council of Origin. Although they typically speak a language of rhythms, they have no problems learning the common tongue or any other language they put their mind to. That's about it for this video. My next Back Evo video coming out in a week will be a big tone shift on man-eating chimeras. Consider subscribing so you can see it, and thanks for watching!